Hey, what's up? This is Kevin from Kevin's Barbecue Joints. In this episode, I talked to Brian Bracewell from Southside Market and Barbecue in Elgin, Texas. Uh, this one is, we've been trying to get this together for a long time and I'm really excited we got a chance to sit down. Super interesting. Uh, I love talking about and talking to the new barbecue joints and what's like, and how exciting it is for them and, and the progression and they're doing a lot of amazing things. But Southside Market has been around for 137 years, since 1882. I think most restaurants would be excited if they're around for 37 years. It's a, uh, it's phenomenal. It's amazing. There's no one listening to this or alive today on the planet was alive when it first opened, which is just uh, hard to wrap my head around. It's interesting to hear the progression and how his grandfather was a door-to-door -door meat salesman, which sounds absurd <laughs> to thinking about it, uh, and uh, how they got their first location and then moved to the second location. So we get all into the history and how the product has changed. For 125 years, they only had one sausage, and then now they have eight different sausages and dry sausage and summer sausage and tons of stuff. We get into all their food, everything that they're making, what you could expect when you visit, and what his, his background is, and talk all about his upbringing, and then we get into their second location. They have a second location at Bastrop. So there's a lot of information we talk about and it's very interesting. He has a lot of knowledge and I think you're really gonna enjoy this episode. And I'm happy to have the Smoke Sheet on board as a sponsor for this podcast. And uh, it sounds like a lot of you guys out there too have enjoyed it. Uh, I've gotten a lot of feedback saying that they've signed up and they enjoy it. It's a it's a very cool newsletter. It's a, it, You might not think that you need a newsletter until you sign up for the Smoke Sheet and then you read it and realize that Ryan and Sean have put together something really, really cool it's not just a list of links or random stuff it's they've curated it just for us people that are into barbecue it, it was started by Ryan Cooper who is at barbecue tourist and Sean Ludwig who is at NYC barbecue the two of them have traveled across the country going to barbecue joints and they're into barbecue news and just like a lot of us they're and they're crazy about barbecue so that there's barbecue information there's barbecue news there's specific stories that they write about from events that they've gone to and different barbecue joints that they've gone to. There's openings, there's closings, there's when people are moving to different barbecue joints. A lot of guys, pitmasters move from place to place. So they follow them, put it in the newsletter. There's like the barbecue podcast, barbecue YouTube stuff, a recipe of the week. It's definitely chock full of information and I do go through it every week. I know I say that on every episode that I do, but I do. <laughs> I really do. It's a really good resource. It's available at bbqnewsletter.com. That's bbqnewsletter.com, the smoke sheet, barbecue news worth consuming. And as always, if you're digging these, please subscribe. That way you won't miss out on any of them. Also, please do comment below. Let me know what you're thinking. Let me know what you think about the episode, if there's something cool about it, something you want to share, or something you want me to contact. You can also contact me on my website at kevinsbbqjoints.com. But I also have links to all my podcasts, all my YouTube stuff, all my barbecue joint visits and butcher shop visits and lots of cool other stuff. Thank you for the feedback because I'm digging this. I'm really enjoying talking to all these people and getting to know them and learn their stories. And I'm hoping you guys are too. So thanks so much for listening. I do appreciate it and uh, enjoy this. Good afternoon. Howdy. How, <laughs> how are you doing today? I'm doing great. How about yourself? I'm doing really well. <laughs> doing good. I So yeah, so I, I've been, we've been trying to do this for, it seems like a year and a half or so. So I, I'm glad that we finally got it started. And, and I, I wanted to start off can we talk about the history of the restaurant? I know it wasn't at, at the location that you're at right now, but was it, uh, it was started by William Moon? Yes, sir. So Southside was started in 1882 by William Moon, really on the outskirts of Elgin, Texas. He, uh, he slaughtered cattle and pigs and brought the meat, uh, fresh meat to town on the back of a horse-drawn buggy wow. and sold fresh meat door to door. And so basically he was just a, a butcher shop on wheels selling fresh meat. Uh, again, he started that in 1882. The, the slaughter plant was about a mile outside of town. Okay. And so he would come to town every day. And then the sausage and the barbecue is just a derivative of him having fresh meat, no refrigeration. So he either sold it fresh or smoked it and sold it the next day. And when he did that, did he also, so that, was he offering fresh and smoked at, at a certain point? Yeah. Called Southside at the time, or what did he call it? It was called Southside Market. Oh, it was? Yep. Okay. That was from 1882 to 1886, he did that. In 1886, he started his first brick and mortar old German butcher shop, basically in, in downtown Elgin. And uh, it was actually on the side of South Street, which is now Central Street. Okay. But it was South Street, so the name Southside Market uh, 
that's where that came from. He uh, he started selling barbecue uh, again due to just having fresh meat and no refrigeration. And so I don't think that Southside Market and barbecue was the name in the beginning. The barbecue was added later, but they always had that available. And that that is that's the concept for Central Texas style barbecue mm-hmm. is that you because there's no refrigeration and it was like a, a butcher shop style. That was all that all. So that's. Was that, is this is it the oldest barbecue joint in Texas? It's the oldest barbecue joint in Texas that we know of, um, and I, I haven't had anybody uh, dispute that. I don't think we're necessarily the first by any means, uh, but this business has been around for the last hundred and thirty-seven years. Isn't that amazing. That's just it's like, and, I, and I'm sure they would never un- believe that the landscape of the of Central Texas style or even Texas style barbecue is. That they, he would probably be so shocked to see it. Oh yeah, no doubt. Even my grandfather, you know, three generations of my family have been here since 1968, and for my grandfather's whole life or whole career here at Southside, it was it was a job and it wasn't real glamorous or cool. Uh-uh. That's only that's only happened here in the last ten years or so. <laughs> there, were, there were guys from California calling up to to, to interview to interview him via via the internet and try to find headphones and all, all that jazz. No. Oh Lord. So when did so when did your family take over? So Southside was again started in 1882 my grandfather bought it in 1968 he was the uh sixth owner of the business so from 1882 to 68 there's some other families involved uh it had always passed hands and kind of stayed as a small town butcher shop you know down there in elgin he bought it in 68 he was a traveling meat salesman at the time working for armor swift and company oh wow uh he was originally from south of san antonio based out of san antonio uh, for a while after he came back from the Korean War, uh, he moved to Austin in 66, and Southside was one of the accounts that he called on. And right about that time, uh, late 60s, early 70s, um, inspection was coming down the, the pipeline for all these small processors, uh, state inspection. And so the folks that owned it at that time, the Statch Brothers, uh, they were not liking the government coming in and telling them what they needed to do with their business. And there was going to need to be some upgrades with the facilities and, and what have you. And so my grandfather bought it at that point in time. And, and then it's been in our family since then. Did they have all those, the, the same sausage recipes? Are those, do those all go back this far or further? So for the first 125 years of our business, we only made really one sausage recipe. Mm-hmm. It was what we call the original Elgin hot sausage. Mm-hmm. Uh, of course, back in the early days, prior to my grandfather buying the business, and even when he bought it, it was a little spicier. Okay. And uh, when he bought the business, uh, he told me, you know, if you saw if you saw two women a month in Southside, you were lucky, and you sure didn't want to tangle with them. <laughs> and so his vision was to make it more of a family-oriented place. Huh. And so one of the things he did to do that, other than taming down the crowd a little bit, was to take some of the heat out of the sausage. And so he toned down the sausage a little bit with uh, the cayenne and uh, put hot sauce on the tables. So those who wanted to make it the old old style. And so that was the original, we call it the 1882 version of our sausage. Oh, that's what that is. Okay, I've seen that a million times, but I've always wanted to ask. Okay. And so he took some of the pepper out of the 1882 version, and that's the original version. Uh, The name stuck, the Elgin Hot Gut stuck, and... um, that's you know I, it's not not really up to me to change that at this <laughs> point in time and so we call the second version the original version and that just is what it is <laughs> now, now can you explain to, to people that might not understand the, the term hot gut what that means sure so what we're selling is hot guts around here is just a texas barbecue sausage it's a coarse ground sausage uh, it's 100% beef. We're using a natural pork casing on it, which is, that's what sausage casings started yeah. out being, you know. Um, and then it's real simple spice recipe, mainly salt and pepper. And so uh, it, the name Hot Guts comes from the natural pork casing, which, as you know, is pork intestines and hot off the pit. Hot guts. I love that. No, I love that. I've always loved that term, and I think, but I, and I've said it. There's some people that that sell sausage, and they've called it hot gut out here, and I think people have have it's been squeamish about that term because to them it sounds so strange, it or they don't even understand why it's called that. When I was growing up, I mean, everybody that came into the 
barbecue joint or into the butcher shop, they ordered hot guts. That's just what they ordered. They didn't say Elgin sausage beef. What they wanted hot guts, and so the whole time I was growing up, that's just what that product was called. And I guess uh, probably in the '90s or 2000s, we kind of got away from that a little bit. Of uh, just it wasn't politically correct anymore. Make people squeamish or whatever. <laughs> Uh, but when we turned 125 years old, I thought, you know what, what the heck? We've been here for 125 years. We're going to call it hot guts, and that's what it I is. I love that. No, I love that. Did, and you and the, the bank location that you're at right now, the former bank. It, when did you guys move into that location? So my grandfather bought that in uh, the late '80s. Okay. It went out of business in the savings and loan crisis in the mid '80s, and um, it was Security National Bank. So he bought the bank building, and he moved the business from downtown Elgin out to the highway we opened up for business here in 1992. 92. So we've been in this location for 25 years. Wow and I think and, it would, uh, would you there was another location that he was looking at right that he was going to do in downtown? Well his vision was it was always a downtown business for ever since he had it and it'd been there for a hundred years you know over a hundred years at that point in time and he just wanted to rebuild down there. Uh, the buildings were all you know hundred years hundred plus years old and he had bought all the buildings on a city block with the exception of one and what he wanted to do was just basically flatten them <laughs> rebuild and he, he was squeezed from parking as well he wanted to create some additional parking uh, because the business was growing yeah. and that was his vision right as he was doing that the city came in and created a historical district in that part of downtown uh, and I see. they would allow him to renovate and remodel from within but not knock anything down which was you know it was the right thing for them to do that was good it really ticked him off oh i'm sure yeah i'm sure he made him really bad <laughs> sure and so when he moved out to the highway you know there was that was a big deal for the small town of elgin texas yeah. of you know yeah. this business moves out to the highway takes all the people from downtown and so that was a big deal in, you know from that point forward, the business grew exponentially. Well, because it's right on that highway. Goes back to location, location, location. And so that's number one. Number two, if he wouldn't have done that, there wouldn't have been enough for me to come home to. And so I would, if I was in the barbecue business, I'd have to be somewhere else. Mm -hmm. And so it, it worked out for me as well. And then as a child, were you, your father worked there, right? My dad started working at Southside when he was 12. Uh, when my grandfather bought it in 68 and then uh, I started working at the at Southside when I was 12 as well. But did uh, you first see yourself working there at this age now or because you, you went to Texas, Texas A&M, right? Yeah, you know, people ask me when did I decide to be part yeah. of the family business and to be honest with you, I have no, I don't remember making that decision. I just grew up in small town business, family business uh, and pretty much our world revolved around the business, uh, you know, it was centrally located in downtown Elgin after school, wherever school I was at, I'd get my brother and sister and we'd walk to, we called it the market. We'd walk to the market and hang out at the market from three o'clock until it shut down at six and then we'd go home. And so we were just always there. And I just remember, you know, if I wanted, when I started working, that's where I needed to earn money and that's what I did. Um, I made the decision to go to Texas A&M to learn meat science. And uh, so I took a four year break uh, from Elgin. I still came back on the weekends and holidays to work in the business. Uh, but then I graduated from A&M in 98 and came back home and they put an apron on me and hung around a little bit too long, I guess. So I've been here ever since. <laughs> what did that meat science background give you and what was and what did that entail? It's because it's pretty extensive over there. And I know that they have brisket camp and other things and it's it's something that I see from afar from Los Angeles going, oh man, that looks so amazing. Yeah. Well, you ought to come out sometime. I, we, we, I'm blessed and get to help them out at uh, Camp Brisket and Barbecue Summer Camp and working with the same uh, professors that I learned under, you know, 20, 20 some odd years ago, Dr. Sable, Dr. Griffin, Ray Riley, uh, Dr. Keaton is a process meets, uh, professor there, Dr. Osborne, all great folks. I didn't understand it at the time. I just went there to learn meat. Mm -hmm. Uh, not only did we have the butcher shop and the barbecue joint, but we had a processing plant or still do where we make all of our sausage products and distribute them. 
And so my degree, basically, I was trained to run a, a meat plant. Mm-hmm. And um, oh, that's great. <laughs> yeah, I tell everybody growing up in a small town family business, you do what you do because that's what you're told to do. <laughs> and you don't ask many questions. And if you do ask too many questions, you get told to sit down and do what I told you to do. <laughs> that's what I said. And so I went to A&M to learn why we do what we do. Mm-hmm. And uh, really, really good stuff. And I came home thinking, oh, man, this is great. Have all this knowledge. Now we've got to got to put it into play. You know, there's better ways to do things. Or And uh, then I learned uh, family negotiations and politics and all that stuff. And so... Because it is yeah. a family business, and and family businesses aren't always easy, and sure. it's yeah, and, it, and it's also something that is because it's it's been there for it's not like a three year old business or four year old business. There's a lot of things that have been in place for so long that to even probably tweak things a little bit, it takes a little bit of a negotiation, probably. No doubt, no doubt. That's when I learned that sometimes it's much easier to beg for forgiveness and ask for permission. <laughs> That's and, true. Uh, that makes sense. And so my grandfather was really. Uh, open and honest with me in the beginning he told me you're either growing or you're dying there's nothing in between mm-hmm. and so we want you to grow this business we want you to come in and help us grow uh, but there's certain things that we do and we do them the way we do them and we're not going to change that but we're willing to listen to ideas that's good and so that was good in theory and I'd bring the ideas and <laughs> no I'll bring another idea well no and so you know once I learned that there's certain core aspects of our business that we're not going to mess with. We're going to cook with wood. You know, we're going to use the meat we use. We're going to use salt and pepper to season it with it. Once I started understanding that that's, that's part of who we are. That's not what we do. That's who we are. Uh, and then there's things on the perimeter per perimeter that you can tweak mm-hmm. and, uh, you know, make more efficient. So we started working on those types of things. What year did you guys get into the wholesale business? Because when I lived in Texas, I was astounded by seeing how much tech, how much Texas sausage there is at a supermarket. Whereas here, there's there's zero. It just it just doesn't exist. Or maybe it might be a Texas style, but it's mm-hmm. it's not even close to what I had in Texas. When how long has that wholesale business been around, or how long? Well, when my grandfather bought the business, uh, you know, we had a slaughter plant because all the meat that we sold in the business we slaughtered ourselves. Um, And so the big grocer around here is Mm H-E-B. And um, back in the early days, he would, him and my father, they would slaughter cattle and pigs, and they would actually sell sides of beef and pork to the individual H-E-B stores. They didn't have the big commissaries back then, and so they were selling swinging beef to each individual grocery store. And so while he was making the rounds with doing that, he wanted more weight on a truck. We make sausage. People like it. So he put that on the truck and we started selling that to the grocery stores as well. And so that's kind of how that evolved to the point where now they've got their own meat commissaries. They don't buy swinging beef. They buy box beef. And so that part of our business, you know, it evolved away from us. Mm -hmm. Uh, But because we were in there with the sausage, then we just rolled with the punches and, and started distributing more sausage. At what point were you shipping nationwide? Uh, we, we created our first website in the early 2000s, and um, we started shipping, you know, right, probably early to mid-2000s, where we would, you know, started out with phone orders, um, and then we built an online store, and we were, you know, onesie, twosie, you know, using FedEx, um, UPS, whatever. The very first shipping customer I remember servicing, I would take boxes 50 and 60 pound boxes of sausage to the bus station in downtown Elgin and put it on a Greyhound and that's how we that's how we started shipping frozen sausage on a Greyhound oh wow that's that's so crazy that's such the early days and that and I I, were you guys one of the very first that were were shipping I think it was there was a couple people that were shipping it wasn't a big business at the time wasn't a big business and when that really first started coming out we're you know, inspected by the state of Texas. And then 2002, I took us to USDA inspection, which same inspection processes, but going USDA from Texas gave us the ability to ship outside the state lines. Gotcha. And so in the early days, we were being told that, hey, 
you have to have the inspection mark on every package that you're shipping. And so that's one of the reasons that I took us to USDA inspection so we could get across those state lines and with our online store. And, um, and that was back, I guess in 2002. Yeah. Uh, so that's, that's it, in my head. I'm like, that's not too far ago, but actually it's 2000. That's 17 years ago. That's, it just seems yeah. like yesterday was 2002. So yeah. that's, so that's, that's the right amount of time. Oh, that's, Let's before because I I don't I can go a million places with this because I'm so interested. Sure. Let's talk about the restaurant itself. So when people arrive okay. and they come, what can I know? There's a butcher shop. Let's let's talk about what they can expect to see when they come. Sure. Well, when you when you show up at any South Side, we got two of them right now. We want to show people what we do, and so it's all about uh, you know wood fires, quality meat, simple dry rub, and time. And so when you walk into the store. Hopefully you'll get a sense of all that, smell it, see it. Um, in the Elgin store, you'll walk into big dining room, and then we've got kind of cafeteria line uh, service with the butcher shop on the side. Mm -hmm. um, at the old store in downtown Elgin, you have to walk through the butcher shop to get to the barbecue joint in the back of the building. Oh, interesting. And so at our second store in Bastrop, we. Uh, we have, you've got to walk by the butcher shop to get your barbecue. And so, you know, it back in the old days, we were mainly a butcher shop that sold barbecue on the side. That's of course evolved with, you know, Walmart super centers and everything yeah, out yeah. there. And so now we're the barbecue joint that still sells fresh meat on the side. Uh, but it's part of our name, it's part of who we are. And um, so any, anywhere we go, we take a little butcher shop. Now it looks a lot different, we used to, you know, cut swinging beef you know from the carcass uh and now it's really I I don't know, dumbed down to the point where it's mainly the products that we make our sausage products everything that's barbecue on the menu we sell it in the butcher shop as well uh, raw where you can cook it yourself raw and season that's you can just ask. go throw it on the pit mm -hmm. and then we sell it fully cooked as well now, can you buy, do you, do you sell steaks and things like that? Is that even something that... We do. You do? We do. Yep. Yep. So we sell uh, ribeyes, New York strips, and sirloins. Okay. Because I, when I came in, I don't think I even noticed that portion. Oh, I was just lo loving everything else that I saw. Now, is that... So do people, do you find a lot of customers come in and buy barbecue and they buy stuff from the butcher shop? Is that common? It is. You know, one thing that we don't compete with is convenience. And so... You know, my wife is much more convenient for her to go to a grocery store. And so our butcher shop customers are largely barbecue customers that like what we have or appreciate the quality of the meats and, and are going to go home and do it themselves. And it's a, it's a special occasion or they just care about it that much. That they want top quality. And so our best meat market customer is a barbecue customer that wants to take some home as well. Gotcha. And when, how many different sausages do you guys sell? At any given time, uh, we've got, I think, about eight different ones on the shelf right now. Can you by memory list those just so people, because it'll get people excited? <laughs> sure. No, we've got the, of course, the uh, raw Elgin hot guts, just like we've made all, you know, since 1882. Uh, that's the only uncooked sausage we sell. And then on the smoked sausages, we have the 1882 smoked, we have the uh, original beef smoked sausage. Uh, those are both all beef. On pork and beef, we've got uh, a jalapeno cheese uh, pork and beef smoked sausage and a Polish sausage. That's a pork and beef. And then on all pork, we have a pork and garlic and we have a country style smoked sausage. It's all pork. Then we have two summer sausages that we sell, one jalapeno and one regular. Uh, they're pork and beef. And we're just coming out this spring with uh, some dried sausage and oh. some beef sticks. And both of those are all beef as well. We sell the jerky as well. The dried sausage, would that be that it's uh, dehydrated or how is that? Or is it just that it gets more smoke and more time? More smoke, more heat, more time. And so, yeah, basically it dehydrates it, but we're doing that in the smokehouse, not yeah, in yeah. like an oven. That's an interesting sausage. I, mean, I had never had that before I had gone to Texas. Yeah, it's kind of... You know, if you're going fishing, you're going to put one of those in your tackle box and uh -huh. stick a cheese and you're uh, set for the day. Barbecue-wise, the gamut, you guys sell the gamut, right? Yes, sir. You have lamb, too? We do. Okay. We sell uh, lamb ribs. 
And so back in the early day, and really we have that on the menu kind of as a throwback to the old mm-hmm. days. And, you know, lamb used to be a staple around here. Uh, and it was called mutton. Mm-hmm. You know, mutton's the older animal, of course. But, you know, people around here didn't care. They just wanted lamb and we sold it as mutton. And uh, I finally changed it on the on the menu board uh, here a couple years ago because mutton just doesn't sound good anymore. <laughs> More people want lamb, but our old time customers, they come in, they want mutton. And so we give them lamb ribs and, and that, that all works. Yeah, brisket, pork ribs. Yeah, so we're using prime brisket. Uh, and then um, on the weekends, we'll sell the uh, three bone beef plate short ribs. Um, so those are our main beef items. Um, pork, you know, the normal pork spare ribs. We do sell a baby back pork rib as well. And then we make uh, pork steaks. We take the Boston oh, butt, yeah. cut it, and smoke those. That's kind of a throwback to the butcher shop days mm-hmm. as well. And then we have chicken halves, uh, turkey breast, the lamb ribs. Uh, and we the one sausage that I didn't tell you about earlier was our sausage slammer, which is... Um, we take a pork sausage uh, patty, we stuff it with uh, uh, fresh jalapeno, cut it in half, remove the seeds, stuff it with cheese, wrap it with sausage, wrap it with bacon, and smoke that. <laughs> and that's been a pretty good, a pretty good seller for us here lately. That's pretty new, right? It's new. It's been around for about four years. Yeah, it's new for you guys, and that's. Uh, and do you guys sell that too on your website? Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. What made you guys open up in Bastor? Because it's not it's it's just south of you guys, right? It is. Yeah. Uh, it's about 15 miles south of Elgin. It's in the same county. Uh, I actually live in Bastor. Oh. And, you know, I grew up in Elgin. Of course, lived in Elgin my whole life. And then when I started working at Southside, I needed to move to Bastrop to make that whole family business thing work. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so we... You know, from the time I was very young, I always remember people coming in and telling my dad and grandpa, hey, you need to open up another store. Won't you open up another store? And they'd always say, yeah, yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna. (laughs) And so um, my wife and I bought the business from my grandparents in 2010. And uh, it took us a couple of years to figure out how to make that happen. And uh, we opened the store in Bastrop for two reasons. We wanted to be on the outskirts of Austin uh, you know, Elgin's on a major highway be- between Austin and Houston. Mm. Uh, Bastrop sits on a major highway between Austin and Houston. And so we wanted to block all the different travel paths they could take, <laughs> try to make it hard for them to get around us. So we, we wanted to grow. We were living in Bastrop at the time. It was on a highway from Austin to Houston. It just kind of made, it's in our backyard, home county. It just kind of was comfortable and made sense. And so that's what we did. What year did it open? Uh, November of 2014. And then yeah. what's what's that location like? You said that it's it's a throwback to the the original location, right? It is. You know, I really remember growing up in that old store, and so it's not built like an old downtown building, but it's it, it brings a lot of the elements in. In fact, uh, my grandfather, two months before he passed away, he sold the old store downtown. And when they remodeled it, they took a lot of the glazed tile off the walls. And so I went and salvaged that. Oh, nice. Okay. And put that in the new store. We've got some uh, old tin from an old barn my grandpa had. We use that in the store. Anytime we take something out of the sausage plant, piece of equipment or uh, sliding doors or something, we save that and use that at the store. Uh, Just to kind of, you know, it, it means something to me. Our old time customers, it means something to them, mm-hmm. and so it's uh, that's what we're trying to do there, make it feel more like home. And people that are into the history of barbecue, like me, or uh, and there's thousands of others, would love to see that. That would that's really cool to see and check out and get a little slice of history because it's important. It's we lose a lot of that with all the with with brand new buildings and locations. Sure, sure. You know, it, it, you know that's a great point. For I see that as a tremendous responsibility. Um, you know, this, I say I bought the business, but this isn't my business. I'm just a steward of it mm-hmm. for this point in time. And it's going to, if I don't screw it up, it'll live long past me. And I've got a, a card hanging on my desk right in front of me. And uh, that one of our customers left us. It says, my grandfather right here, my father right here, we eat here, our sons eat here, my granddaughter eats here. Oh, my God. That's 
five generations of that family. And so that's as, so touching. That's so touching. That's bigger than me or mm-hmm. my family or, or my kids. So it's, um, you know, what we, we try to be very intentional with what we mess with around yeah. here. We want to grow and we want to improve, but you know, this business, uh, it means a lot to folks like that. And so it's my job to not screw it up. Yeah. Like I say, I asked earlier about the fact that it was the, one of the oldest, it's the o- oldest, uh, still standing barbecue restaurant, but it's, if you think about it business wise, there's not a lot of businesses that are over 125 years old in the United States. Like it's not a lot of businesses don't make it that long. Yes, sir. You make yes, it to, uh, to, to a century. That's a lot. You know, for me, when we were looking at, you know, I, I worked in this business for 12 years with my dad and my grandfather. And so not only the longevity of the business itself, but when you look at the statistics of a business passing down from generation to generation of the same family, you know, from first generation to second generation, the stats are like 23% of them survive. And down to the third generation, yeah, you're in single digits. And mm-hmm. so... It was, uh, you know, very intentional of how that process worked and started working on it early to make sure that, you know, I didn't mess it up. Do you hear your grandfather's voice sometimes in your head when you're doing things? Oh, yeah, no doubt. There are certain things I think, golly, if he saw me doing this, he'd kick me right square in the butt. (laughs) Uh, But there's other times I think, ah, he'd probably, he might be a little grumpy, but he'd probably approve. Mm -hmm. It's one thing about my grandfather, you know, he, he told me early on, you're either growing or you're dying, nothing in between. And as I would make changes, I learned his language and that he would, he was going to be grumpy about it regardless, pretty much. But as long as I had the numbers in my hip pocket of proving out what was happening, then he would get okay with it. And, um, and so is there a certain meal that he would love to have there? Like, is there like, is there something that if you were putting together a platter or plate that he would love, what would that be? Sausage and beans. Sausage and beans? Yep. Sausage, just our hot gut sausage on butcher paper with, um, you know, he'd eat, eat it with crackers and hot sauce. And then uh, we serve like a, a South Texas pinto bean, which that's what he grew up on. And so that's all he needed right there. That, that that the hot sauce and crackers too. That's such a Texas thing. It really is. Yes, sir. That little like the the way that's the salt with the he, that's just yeah. That's that's a great. Would that be would that be something he'd have for breakfast or like a little snack almost? You know, all day long. About ten a.m. Starting about ten a.m. and then any day all day on Friday nights. Um, you know, especially during Lent. I grew up Catholic. You know, just we just eat beans with no meat. That was just the Friday night meal. And so that's what he liked to do. What's your favorite meal there? What would be like an ideal meal if you're going to have one or sit down with somebody? You know, that's a good question. I, uh, when I eat at my store, I eat the same meal every time. A piece of sausage about this long, two slices of brisket and a pork rib. Those three items are 85% of our sales. And so if we're having a good day there, we're having a good day. And so I don't know if I do that because I like it the best or yeah, because I'm checking on the business, but that's what it sounds just, like. It almost sounds like your quality control slash you really like it. Yeah. I ate that for lunch today, actually. Did you? <laughs> yeah, I did. And how was it? <laughs> it was good. It was good. I was proud of the guys. I had to go pat them on the back. They did a good job. And how many employees do you guys have now? Uh, between all the stores and the plant, we've got 140 to 145 employees. Wow. That's, so just like everybody else, we're scrambling to find, find folks, you know, it's a, it's a really good economy right now. And it's, it's, it's tough to recruit and hire, but wow. you know, saying that we're blessed. We've got some really, really good folks Our uh, the guy that makes sausage for us, Mondo, he, uh, he just passed Monday was his 20 Tuesday was his 26th anniversary of being wow. with us. That's, that says something right there. We had another lady this week, past 17 years, and so we've got a good mix of, of of long-standing loyal folks. And then as we've grown here recently, we've had we, we've added new positions and, and new folks, and it's been a good a good mix. What is Elgin like? And it's not Elgin. It's like, I think for the longest time before I went to Texas, I'm like Elgin, Elgin, Elgin. And then now I'm like, oh, I, when I got there, I'm like, oh. 
I feel so stupid, but what's what's Elgin like, and and how far away is it so people can know from Austin, or even you said it's between like on the way to Houston, how far away from Houston? Sure. So Elgin sits 20 miles east of Austin on Highway 290. And if you come in and say Elgin, that's a dead giveaway. You ain't from around here. So <laughs> yes. we'll know that yes, real sir. quick. We, <laughs> we love everybody, but uh, just a dead giveaway. Yes. Uh, but Elgin's a small town. Um, you know, we've got about 10,000 people, population, um, you know, high school football, Friday nights normal stuff small town texas and uh we're about an hour and a half from houston okay and so we enjoy a lot of traffic on the highway between those two points and also if you're in austin you can go visit elgin visit you guys and then head north to taylor right isn't that's exactly right we're we're kind of at the intersection of highway 290 and 95 and so if you go north on 95 you go to wayne's place in taylor mm -hmm. and if you go south on 95 you get to our Bastrop store. Bastrop. So you could do that and then, and then go. Yeah. And then from Bastrop, you can head on down to Lockhart. Uh huh. That's true. And oh, that's a great and Luling. And so it's kind of, that's the, the central Texas barbecue trail right mm -hmm. there. Right there. Yeah. Yeah. That's actually, that's a smart, that's a little like, so when, if you're mapping it out and it's important that like for a, for a million reasons to stop by your place, but that's, that would be a nice little, you know, dot you want to stop on the way. And then, so, and actually they can go to you guys first. So that way they don't, um, like oh, it's after, so they got to go first, so that way they can fill up with you guys and then digest some and then go to the next spot. Yeah, I know it's a good little tour. And, um, you know, we, we appreciate seeing folks come through and do that. And, you know, I never say we're the only ones. I say, you know, if you come, you know, Central Texas, we're one of the stops that, we, you know, we'd appreciate you making. And But along with that, you need to go to Wayne's Place, mm -hmm. uh, Louis Miller. You need to go to Kreitz. you got to go to Smitty's. You, you know, to. there's places like that you got to go to as well mm -hmm. so there's a lot of new spots but those places you need to go to they're important sure yeah no doubt and you know it's one thing that with the kind of the evolution of barbecue or over the past 10 years is that you know i've gotten real close with all those folks and um i say real close we see each other at the mm -hmm. texas a m the barbecue summer camp or the camp brisket and these other events which that's one of the, the blessings of this whole deal as people put events together it gets all the barbecue uh -huh. guys together and i don't remember ever seeing my grandfather do that or you know even my dad and there's just a, a, a been a really cool camaraderie built and you know the new guys the old guys the new business the old business it's just good people and you good could people. share you share something a commonality that a lot of people in outside of that world don't share and and especially ones that have been it's, it's a business that's been passed down family to family that's or family member to family member i think that's something with wayne for sure that's something that you guys have that sure. in common without a doubt yep no doubt no doubt we uh tell stories and laugh a little bit and you know there's uh it's a little bit different being in a family business and, <laughs> for sure in, in the barbecue world but it's all it's all great. And what are the hours? Uh, we open at 10 a.m. Uh, 9 a.m. here in Elgin, 10 a.m. in, in uh, Bastrop, and we close. You know, small towns, 8 p.m. on the 8 o'clock at night on the weekdays is about all we can handle around here. Mm -hmm. uh, stay open until 9 on Saturdays and Sundays. Okay. And, and so, seven days a week? Or seven days a week, yeah. We close down three days. Uh, Easter Day, Thanksgiving Day, and Christmas Day. Gotcha. And other than that, we're making barbecue. If you're listening to this on the podcast at southsidemarket.com, you can order all of your food and merchandise. Yeah, I'm sitting in the marketing office. You can see all the <laughs> all the pictures. <laughs> Which, if you're listening to the podcast, that gives you reason to want to go to the YouTube version and actually see. It, cause it's, and I think that's why I like to do both the YouTube and, and a podcast version, so people can see the people. So if someone who sees this can at least now they have an idea of what you're like and, and from hearing hearing from you and seeing you and then when they see they'll be able to recognize you at the restaurant and and say hi and and chat up barbecue with you sure Excellent. good stuff thank you so much for taking the time i've wanted to talk to you for so long and i so appreciate you being you know, forthcoming about your entire family history and everything that's so great hey i i appreciate your time it's a uh, you know this this can turn into a job put your head down and get after it so <laughs> it's not until times like this where I step back and think, hey, you know, this is 
it's kind of cool too. Mm-hmm. Don't get me wrong. I love it every day, but it can turn into a job. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and I'm, you know, I come by it honest. I could BS all day long about barbecue. Mm-hmm. That's, <laughs> and I, I'd, I'd appreciate it. Maybe do a part two someday too. <laughs> there you go. You got it. Right, Thank, take you, care, Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Bye-bye.